the gastrointestinal tract that could be approached for, uh, with drugs uh, with different mechanism, mechanism of action, of drugs that uh, acts uh, on secretion, on inflammation, but also with antibiotics. And one antibiotic in particular was uh, the focus of a very interesting lecture held by Professor Herbert Dupont from the University of Houston in Texas, uh, here in Bologna during the IBS Bologna Days 2016. Uh, Professor Dupont, uh, rifaximin, which, uh, which is an antibiotic uh, discovered here in Italy, was the focus uh, of your speech. Why it is uh, so interesting for you, for, uh, for gastroenterologists? Well, to begin with, I wrote an article in the New England Journal of Medicine in 1993 describing the ideal antibiotic for intestinal infections and intestinal diseases. And it was a medical director from Alpha Wasserman here in Bologna that called me and said, you described rifaximin. Well, I became very interested in it, and we began to study it in a variety of conditions. And it turns out while IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, is not an infectious disease per se, it's not caused by an infecting organism, the microbes are very important in the intestine in controlling health, both intestinal health, brain health. And so altering in a favorable way these microbes with an antibiotic can have beneficial effects. So we were very interested in this drug because of its pharmacokinetic properties. Very active in the small intestine, not so active in the colon because of its uh, pharmacologic properties. And it seemed to us very early on to be an ideal drug for diseases of the small intestine. And which are the clinical data in IBS? There have been a number of trials with irritable bowel syndrome showing that global improvement in symptoms, people feel better. Uh, they have less bloating, they have less days of suffering, their bowel uh, patterns improve, they're able to function better uh, than in the placebo group. And for that reason, it's one of the major drugs uh, used for IBS. And has to be associated with other drugs more specific for this type of disease, or could be used also alone in certain conditions? Uh, rifaximin is used as a single agent uh, in patients with IBS. There's no need to include another drug for, with it. Uh, let's move from IBS to other GI condition because you have spoken also about the traveler's diarrhea, about the inflammation of the bowel. Uh, uh, d disease, uh, about uh, liver failure. In, in this condition, which is the role of rifaximin? Well, rifaximin, again, because it's bile-soluble, it's available in the bile-rich small intestine. Traveler's diarrhea is an infection of the small intestine by E. coli strains that produce toxin. Because the drug is bioavailable in the colon, it can kill the organisms in traveler's diarrhea and be effect it's effective both in treatment and prevention of that disease. Irritable bowel syndrome, we believe a lot of the symptoms come from the small intestine, so it's active. With liver, advanced liver disease, again, we have portal hypertension, we have bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine, and we have another indication for rifaximin, which is able to alter the flora and alter the metabolism of the gut, leading to a reduction in absorption of toxins, which normally build up in the bloodstream of liver patients with failure and cause brain uh, dysfunction and encephalo encephalopathy. And uh, rifaximin taken chronically prevents the absorption of these toxins, seem to prevent translocation of bacteria across the mucosa of the small in intestine that is inflamed from portal hypertension and can be effective in reducing uh, 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 spontaneous bacterial peritonitis as well as the encephalopathy. 
Now, rifaxin also is an anti-inflammatory drug and has been used in inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and it appears to also be through effects on the gut flora, favorable effects on the gut flora, and favorable effects on reducing inflammation of the intestinal mucosa that's important. Limited studies have shown that rifaximin appears to be beneficial also in diverticulitis, inflammation of the diverticuli that develop as we age. So this is a antibiotic that's really more than an antibiotic because it's being used to treat this entire array of gastrointestinal diseases that are not infectious diseases but they're associated with abnormal intestinal microbiota and inflammation of the gut, which is reversed or inhibited by rifaximin. Uh, as you have mentioned, in, uh, in many patients, this drug has to be taken for a long time or for cyclic therapies. Uh, what about the safety of rifaximin? What you could say to us? Well, there's a great concern about use in ana of antibiotics because, in general, because of the occurrence of antibiotic resistance. This is public enemy number one, antibiotic resistance. It's limiting how we treat many infections. So governing agencies are going to want to make sure a drug is safe. Uh, if you're going to give an antibiotic to people, does it produce antibiotic resistance that will prevent the effectiveness of antibiotics in future treatment of infectious diseases. Well, that's the good news of rifaximin because the, the, most of the microbes in the body live in the colon, the lower GI tract. And rifaximin is not very bioavailable, bioavailable in the aqueous colon. Very available in the small bowel, it gets into the aqueous colon and disappears. It becomes crystalline form, not available. So it largely leaves the intestinal bacteria alone. And most of the flora of the gut do not develop resistance to rifaximin when we use it, which explains why we can give patients recurrent courses, one after the other as they need, because they're not going to develop resistance that prevents efficacy in future use. So it could be prescribed safely? It's a very safe drug. It's been used since the early 80s, widely used, and there's essentially no safety concerns at the present time.